recording. Um, my plan for today is cover a lot of the basic, uh, like expected utility slash insurance problems that you're going to be finding um, on your midterms. Uh, just because I know that last lecture was pretty heavy on the conceptual side, not a lot of application. So I just want to get you guys exposed to those problems um, and see that they're really not as hard as maybe um, you kind of would think they are. Um, and if I have enough time, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started on explaining price elasticity or just general elasticity. Um, just because we're going to go ahead and get started on the extra problem set six. Um, so that's my goal for today. And we're going to see uh, if we're going to be able to do that. Um, so with that being said, if you guys want to just kind of work along with me, uh, you guys can pull up extra problem set five. Um, and we're going to start working on some of the problems towards the second half of that. Um, so go ahead and get that pulled up. Um, and I'll pull it up with you guys as well. Um, so we're gonna start with question seven, okay? Um, and this one actually is very tricky. I had to kind of look it over a few times in order to actually understand what was going on. Um, but I think that as we work through this, once you kind of see what is going on and like what the wording actually means, um, it becomes a little bit easier to understand. Uh, so with that being said, if everybody is already there and pulled up to uh, question seven, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So we have that, um, actually, let's, let's just write this. Oops. This is extra problem set five. Question seven, and we have uh, Diego has six thousand four hundred uh, dollars, and he's going to bet on a soccer game. So the idea of betting on some sort of uncertain event is uh, going to be like an indication that we're working with either an expected utility question, um, or you can think of it as, I guess, insurance, right? Um, but in this scenario. Because the result of the soccer game is uncertain, right? We're going to treat it as an expected utility kind of question, right? So, um, team A is a favorite to win. And so, as a result, you guys can kind of think of 80 cents per ticket as being like the cost of the insurance, right? So, you will pay 80 cents per ticket for $1 of reward. Um, and for each amount of tickets or for each ticket that you buy, if that team wins, right, then you're going to get um, the payoff of one times however many tickets you bought. Okay. So that's kind of the intuition there. And so because the tickets for team A, right, are more expensive, that reveals that um, the probability that team A wins is higher than the probability that team B wins, right? Um, and that's also explained in words, uh, but that's just kind of some intuition to kind of go along with what the word, um, with, with what the words say. So the price, the price of tickets A are equal to 0.8, and the price of tickets uh, B are equal to 0.2. Okay. So what we have to do is come up with a utility function that kind of represents what, um, what his preferences are, right? So we know that his utility function is going to be uh, based on whatever income or consumption he's gonna be able to buy. So that's gonna be the money that the tickets bring back to him, right? So we have it that his utility function, right, is, uh, going to be some sort of expected utility, right? So his expected utility, right, is equal to 0.5, right? And so the reason why um, I have a 0.5 that's right there is because if you read in the prompt, Diego believes that the two teams are equally likely to win, right? Which kind of 
explains why we have this 0.5 right here is because he believes that each outcome is equally likely. Okay, so that's why his utility is formed in this way. Um, we also have it that um, the expected value of right his uh, wealth is going to be in the form of a natural log. So if you remember what I said in last lecture, if someone has uh, the natural log or any sort of diminishing returns kind of utility function, then they're going to be risk averse. Okay. So we have 0.5 times the natural log, right, of um, whatever, however many tickets he bought. So TA in this case is used to represent the amount, the amount of tickets for team A that he buys at 80 cents per, right? And the reason why you can just substitute TA is because each ticket is worth $1. So if he has 500 tickets, for example, that's equivalent to saying $500. So you can kind of just use that as a placeholder for now. Um, so this is gonna be one part of it. And we know that they, uh, these probabilities have to equal to each other or have to sum up to one is what I should say. Um, and so we get that this is 0.5 times the natural log of T B. And is anybody confused so far about like what the setup? I think once, once you're able to achieve the setup, the rest of the question is a little bit more straightforward. Um, but are there any questions about how I set up the question so far? Yeah. Yeah. The, point, the point fives, is that because the ticket price moved to 50 cents afterwards? So that's not, that's not because of that, right? It's because of the fact that inside the prompts, uh, it says that Diego believes that each team is equally likely to win, right? So oh. you know that utility is based on preferences, right? Not what actually, well, so the preferences are based on what actually is existing, right? In, inside the prompts, but mm -hmm regardless of what the actual probabilities of each team winning are, um, we know that he believes that there's a 50-50 chance that either team will win. And so that's why we have to set up this 0.5 instead of, say, 0.8 or 0.2. And I think that's probably one of the, the trickier aspects of setting up this problem is coming up with these probabilities right here. All right. So if they'd said, like, they think, Team A is twice as likely to win, then would it be what 0.75 to 0.25? Or like how would you set that? Well, up? if if he were to say, like if Diego thinks that team A is twice as likely, right? Well then this would be 0.67, or it would be just be two thirds, and this would be one third. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. That makes sense. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so the key the th the thing is that he thinks they're equally likely to win. So we so we use 0.5 and 0.5. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So let's take a look at um, how many tickets Diego will buy, given that this is his utility function, and given that these, uh, these are the prices of each ticket. So you notice that what we can actually do is find an MRS, right? That is going to be the marginal utility of uh, TA over the marginal utility of, I don't know why I have one right here, of TB, okay? Um, and so this is actually a really unique problem because I can almost guarantee you that most of the time you won't need to set something like this up. Um, but what I like about this problem is that it encapsulates expected utility and it also encapsulates um, the buying and selling, which is what we're gonna see, okay? so. The marginal utility of TA, right, we're gonna ignore this part, is just gonna be equal to 0.5 over TA, right? So that's the derivative of the natural log, it's just one over. And so we also get 0.5 over TB right here, right? And this whole equality is equal to 0.5 TA or over TA times TB over 0.5, right? These 0.5s are gonna cancel out, and we're gonna get that this is equal to TB over TA, right? And so we check that we have diminishing marginal rate of substitution, um, and we see that because we have TA as our like x-axis, um, that we do have diminishing marginal rate of substitution.
okay? And just to kind of tie back, this should make sense because of the fact that we have a natural log function, right? Which implies that this person is risk averse, um, which implies that they prefer to have kind of an equal amount of each scenario, right? if that makes sense. Okay, so this is our MRS and we're gonna set this equal to our price ratio, which is PA over PB which is going to be equal to 0.8 over 0.2, which is equal to four, right? And so from here, we have that TB at the optimal point, right? It is going to be equal to four times TA, right? Meaning that at the optimal point, there's going to be four times as many tickets for team B as there are for tickets of team A, right? And that's because, um, he thinks they're equally likely to win. And basically the price for ticket B is cheaper. Okay. Um, so he'll want four times as many tickets for team B because they're cheaper and he thinks they have an equal chance of winning. Okay. So let's hold on to this. Right. And let's erase some stuff. So let's actually just erase this bottom part. Okay. Um, from here, we can actually just plug this into our budget constraint. So we have that 6,400, which is remember our wealth. Uh, that's not coming up well. So 6,400 is equal to PA. So PA times TA plus PB times TB is equal to 0.8 times TA plus 0.2 times um, TB, but we know that TB is really just four TA, right? And so this whole thing is gonna be equal to 0.8. And so we'll get that 6,400 is equal to point, uh, or 1.6 TA, right? And so if we divide 6,400, by uh, 1.6, so 6,400 right here. And let's just go ahead and use our calculators. So 6,400 divided by 1.6, that's gonna be equal to 4,000, right? So TA is equal to 4,000, right? And so because TA is equal to 4,000, that tells us that TB is gonna be equal to four times amount, four times that amount which is gonna be equal to 16,000, okay? And so that's gonna be the optimal amount, right, given the current circumstances, okay? But we're also given some more information at the end, which says that because one of the key players gets hurt, the probabilities get affected. And so these ticket prices are still going to, um, are still, are, are going to be affected as well, right? Um, we don't have any change in what Diego thinks, like none of that's given inside the prompts. So we're just going to assume that he still believes that each team is equally likely to win, right? So this utility function is gonna stay the same, um, meaning that our MRS is also gonna stay the same, all right? Does everybody kind of see what I mean by that? All right. Um, if you do, if you, or if you have any confusions, um, either speak up or leave it in the chat and I'll try to get to that. Um, but essentially what I'm saying is that nothing about Diego's preferences changes, right? Which means that our MRS, which is based on preferences, is also going to stay the same, all right? The only thing that changes here is the price of the tickets, okay? Um, so we're given that he buys some new tickets and sells some of his old ones. So, um, this is like a perfect example of buying and selling where um, we see what this value is in terms of income. So we want to see what his new income is, is pretty much what I'm trying to say. So we have that PA star is equal to 0.5 and that PB star is equal to 0.5 as well. Okay. Um, so as a result, we wanna see how much are these tickets worth, okay? 
we have that if you sell all of your tickets that say team A is gonna win, you would get two thousands. So you would get two thousand dollars, right? That's just selling four thousand tickets for fifty cents each. And if you sold your team B tickets, right? That's just sixteen thousand tickets for fifty cents each, and that gives you eight thousand, which in total gives you ten thousand, right? So your new income is ten thousand, which, if you notice, right, is going to be higher than the six thousand four hundred that we had beforehand. Okay, so let's erase some of this stuff right here. Uh, we have this is equal to T B over T A, right? This is something that we already found uh, in the previous part. So we essentially have to find a way of distributing our ten thousand dollars. Uh, equally, right, when um, we have that the tickets are 50 cents each, and he believes that each team is equally likely to win, okay? Um, so we have it that TB over TA, which is our MRS, can be set, and let's erase this. We no longer need this information, right? We set TB over TA, equal to our new price ratio, which is 0.5 over 0.5, right? And so we get that TB is equal to TA at the optimal point, right? And so kind of like we did for the previous part, we're gonna put this into our uh, budget constraint and we're gonna get that 10,000 is equal to 0.5 TA plus 0.5, we know that TB is equal to TA, so we can just plug that in right here. And we get that this is just equal to TA, right? And so because we know TA is equal to TB, we can also say this. So, right? Basically, Diego is going to, after the price changes for tickets, right? He's going to purchase 10,000 tickets for team A and 10,000 tickets for team B. And so because we have it that team A wins, each of those tickets has a payout of $1, meaning that um, his wealth at the end is equal to 10,000, all right? Are there any questions about that? All right, uh, I don't see anything in the chat. So I'm going to assume that um, right. you guys kind of understood that, um, but definitely feel free to stop me if I'm wrong about that. Uh, I had a quick question. Yeah, what's up? Um, can you like explain again why we're using like the natural log for utility function? So yeah, um, I think that for you guys and just, I, I mean, for me as well, finding this expected utility equation was the hardest part, right? Um, so first off, we know that we're going to be using some sort of expected utility because we're dealing with uncertain events, right? We can't have team A and team B win, right? It's either one of the two, okay? Um, and we know that Diego thinks that each of the teams has an equal chance of winning, which is why we assign 0.5 in front of each of these, right? Um, but we want to see, right, how like when it comes to expected utility and um i don't know how much of like a math background you guys have right but expected utility is like x times f of x right so the value of x which is 0.5 times f of x um this is a very similar process in that um essentially this is like the value of x and this is like your f of x where this is a function, right, of the utility that you get when TA, right, is the amount of tickets that you have, right? So this natural log is a function of his wealth, right, which is why we plug this into the expected utility equation because it captures how he values his wealth, if that makes sense, right? Where each, each unit, 
of like each dollar um, provides him the natural log of that dollar's worth of utility. Does that make sense? I know that's kind of tricky to kind of think about. Um, so where did you get the 10,000 from? Uh, well, 10,000, right? So first off, we know that after he sells his tickets, that his new income is $10,000, right? Correct? Ye did you, do you understand I don't that? see that on the question. But... Huh? I don't see that on the question. So um, we have it inside the prompt. So this is, right? We have it in the prompt that after he buys the optimal amount of uh, tickets, given that they were 80 cents and 20 cents respectively, right? He goes back to like whatever market and he sells some of those for these new prices. So he previously had 4,000 tickets for team A winning and that produced $2,000 for him. And he also had 16,000 tickets for team B winning, which produced $8,000 for him. And so you add those two up and you get $10,000, right? And so that's the amount of income that he has. Um, but that doesn't quite cover why we have 10,000 as our final answer. The reason why is because we know that his MRS is TB over TA, right? And we know that the new price ratio is 0.5 over 0.5, which is just one. And so we know that at the optimal point where the MRS is equal to the price ratio, that TB is gonna be equal to TA, right? There's gonna be equal amounts of tickets for team B winning as tickets for team A winning, okay? And so when you plug this back into the budget constraint, we get that 10,000, which is his new income, is equal to 0.5, right? And I guess this should be the natural log. Um, or actually no, this is the budget constraint. So it doesn't really matter. So this is the 0.5. So that's the cost of each ticket times the amount of tickets that he buys for team A plus the price of ticket B. And this is actually supposed to be TB, but because we know that the amount of tickets for team B is gonna be equal to the amount of tickets for team A, we substitute that in here so that we can be working with the same variable, right? And so we get that this whole thing is just equal to TA, right? 0.5 TA plus 0.5 TA is just equal to one TA. And so we get that 10,000 is gonna be equal to the amount of tickets for team A that he purchases, which because of this is also equal to the amount of tickets for team B that he purchases. All right. So at this point, he has 10,000 tickets for each team winning. And when team A eventually wins, we have it that um, the amount of tickets for team A that he had was 10,000, which each has a, each ticket has a payoff of $1, which means that his wealth is 10,000 times one, which is just 10,000. Does that Does make that sense? That yeah, thank you. Does that mean that if either team won, he would have gotten 10,000? Yeah, if either team had won, he would have gotten 10,000. Damn, I'm going to bet with this guy. Yeah, this guy's got a nice setup. Um, are there any other questions about this, about this particular um, setup? I, this, I think this is the hardest problem in the problem set, and I think it's actually one of the harder questions within all the problem sets. So. Um, it's okay to be a little bit confused, but hopefully it's all kind of coming together and you can understand how we mix new material with old material, right? Okay, um, I'm gonna take it that there's no more questions and move on. Uh, we're gonna go on to question eight, okay? So question eight is more in line with the kind of question that I would expect you guys to see, right? Where um, it's pretty straightforward what the setup should be um, once you know how to kind of work through these. So we have that this person, which is a football player, has a utility function that's equal to 
the square root of consumption, right? So we know that this person has diminishing returns, which means they're risk averse, okay? Um, whether we need to use that for the problem or not is to be determined, but that's kind of what we know already about this person, all right? Um, so we have that if he's not injured, he will receive an income of 16 million. And if he's injured, he will receive an income of 10,000. So right off the bat, we know that the probability, or basically we know that the bad state is him getting injured and the good state is him not getting injured. And so the probability, the probability of being in the bad state, right, being injured is equal to 0.1, which means that the probability of nothing happening, being in the good state is equal to 0.9, right? And so we want to know what his expected utility is, right? So we know that the formula for expected utility is equal to probability of the bad state times utility um, consumption in the bad state, right? Plus probability of the good state times your utility of consumption in the good state, okay? And um, I forgot who asked the question. I think it was maybe Ryan. This is kind of why we have, uh, we had the natural log set up in our previous expected utility, right? Which is the same reason why we're gonna have the square root of consumption in this expected utility, right? We're just seeing what the utility would be in the bad state, right? And so, uh, let's just go ahead and kind of fill in these problems, like these numbers, and we might be able to get a, get a better explanation. So we know that this is equal to 0.1, and his utility in the bad state is going to be a function of how much he can consume in the bad state. So his utility when he gets injured is going to be a function of how much money he gets when he's injured, right? And we know that his utility is equal to the square root of how much he gets when he's injured, right? Um, and so we're gonna fill in that step. Uh, we're gonna fill in this part in the next step, okay? So 0.9 is the probability that he doesn't get hurt. And this is also, right, the utility that he gets when um, nothing happens, which is gonna be a function of how much money he gets, which is equal to, right, the square root of consumption in the good state. So we were already given that consumption in the bad state is 10,000 and that consumption in the good state is 16 million. Okay, so basically we know that if he were to get injured, which has a 10% probability of occurring, he's going to receive $10,000 and his utility with that $10,000 is the square root of 10,000, okay? So this is equal to 0.1 square root of 10,000 plus 0.9 square root 16 million, right? I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, and you, I would just welcome you guys to just use a calculator because it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, so we have that the like his utility with ten thousand dollars is equal to a hundred. Okay, so this is equal to uh, equal to point one times a hundred plus point nine, and you want to find the util or you want to find the utility that he gets with sixteen million, which is equal to four thousand. All right. And when you add these up, you get that 0.1 times 100 is 10, plus 0.9 times 4,000 is just um, 3,600. Right. And so we get that his expected utility is 3,610, okay, which is going to be answer choice A. Are there any questions about that problem in particular? Hopefully you guys are kind of seeing what the general sh uh, setup should look like, right? We plug in the probabilities of each event occurring and we multiply each of those probabilities with the utility that they would get in that given state of the world, right?
either the good state or the bad state. Um, I have a question real quick. Yeah, what's up? So how is it that the cons- that his income is called C? Why isn't it called M? Um, well, we just assume that whatever he's whatever income he gets is going to be how much he consumes. Oh, okay. So so it's not like he's receiving income separately. It's like whatever he gets is money that he can use in the future. So we call it consumption. Uh, yeah, exactly. And we just say that the price is one. So M is equal to C, right? Okay. In that Thank case. You. All right. Are there any other questions about this problem? Um, I'm hoping that you guys are starting to get a little bit more familiar with what you're expected to be able to do, right? Um, hopefully, after you do enough of these problems, this becomes a very easy setup. And like the math itself isn't very complicated at all. Um, it's definitely the setup that's the hardest. Okay. So, um, we're going to move on and do question nine. I think this one, uh, can be a little bit tricky as well. All right. Also, I want to make an announcement before I forget that, um, I will be doing the full wor- uh, full week's worth of like, CLAS stuff next week, except for Thursday. So normally I wouldn't do stuff on Wednesday if it was in person, but uh, because it's just remote, uh, I can do it whenever. So I'm gonna do my Monday and my Wednesday groups so that you guys can get as many practice problems as possible. Uh, and I'll still have Tuesday drop an hour. So uh, just to kind of throw that out there before I forget to say. All right, so question nine. Um, is we have a utility function or an expected utility function that's going to be equal to 0.5 the natural log of y no rain right so y is his amount of uh income and this is given the condition that there's no rain so plus 0.5 the natural log of his income when there is rain, right? So there's a 50-50 chance that there's gonna be rain or no rain. And so that's what the probabilities here are used to represent. And this is his uh, utility from the income that he gets, okay? In those given conditions. So um, we have to see which crop he'll plant. And so the way that we do that is we just compare which expected utility is going to be higher, all right? So let's just do wheat first. All right, his expected utility is gonna be 0.5 times the natural log, right, of no rain, so 28,000, plus 0.5 the natural log of uh, his income when there is rain, which is 10,000, right? And so you're for sure gonna need a calculator on this. Um, I doubt you would get something like this. Actually, I don't know. There used to be a no calculator policy, but with it being remote, I'm, I, mean, I don't know. How can they know if you use a calculator? So um, basically, we're just going to figure out what the expected utility is here. So natural log of 28,000 times 0.5. All right, and so you get this really weird like decimal. So you get 9.725, right? Um, and I've already done this problem, so I know that the significant figures are important. Um, but if you store it in your calculator, it doesn't really matter. You can always just reference it. But this is the expected utility from planting wheat, okay? And so we want to compare that to the expected utility from planting um I don't know why I said crop, this should be corn, right? From planting corn, okay? The expected utility in that case would be 0.5 times the natural log, right? Of 19,000 because that's the income when there's no rain from growing corn plus 0.5 times the natural log of 15,000, right? And again, you would uh, basically, just figure out what that is. So let's do that. All 
All right. And you get that this is equal to 9.734, right? So these numbers are really close, right? But what you notice is that the expected utility from planting corn um, is higher than planting wheat. So this individual should uh, plant corn, right? Um, uh, instead of planting wheat. But we get a part B where we're saying, what if this farmer has the option to choose uh, to plant his field with half of each crop, right? So this is part A. Actually, let's erase this. Um, in part A, we got that corn had expected utility equal to 9.734, right? And so, in order to decide whether he should plant his field with half and half, we have to get an expected utility that's going to be higher than this number right here. Okay. So how we figure that out is God damn. Here we go. Um, the probability of each event. This is really yeah. The probability of each event, like rain or no rain, is still going to be 50-50. So that doesn't change. Um the natural log function, right? That's how he values, um, that's how he gets utility from each dollar of income that he gets, right? That's not gonna stay, that's gonna stay the same, right? Plus 0.5 natural log y r, okay? What's going to change is going to be y n r and y r, right? So if he goes half and half, we're gonna have it that y n r, is going to be equal to um, 28,000 over 2 plus, plus 19,000 over 2, right? Meaning that half his crop is wheat and half his crop is corn, right? So that equals out to, let's see, 28,000 plus 19,000. Divided by two, this is 23,500, right? And we want to find what y r is, right? This will be a very similar process, except we do 10,000 over two plus 15,000 over two. That's going to be 25,000 over two, which is just 12,500, okay? And so we plug these values into our expected utility equation, right? So we get 0.5 times the natural log of 23,500 plus 0.5 times the natural log of 12,500. And we get that this is equal to 9.749, right? And if we compare that to the expected utility of only planting corn, right? We get that going half and half actually produces a higher expected utility, right? Which is why uh, the farmer should plant it half and half, All right? Um, are there any questions about this one? All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to take it that you guys are getting a little bit more comfortable, right? Um, that's kind of the hope is that with each question, you guys are getting more and more comfortable. Um, so um, hopefully every step of this made sense. Um, and if not, you guys can always uh, right, reference the uh, recorded lectures that I post. Um, but yeah, that's question nine for you guys. Uh, let's see how many we can get in 10 minutes. So. We have question 10 coming up. All right, so here's question 10. All right, um, we basically have that there's a 50% chance that all eggs carried on any one trip will be broken during the trip. Um, so he can either bring 12 or bring six at a time and so they want us to show like what all of the possible outcomes from each strategy is um so let's just show the outcomes so uh strategy one 
is 12 eggs at a time. And so the outcomes from this strategy are 12 eggs broken or 12 eggs unbroken, right? And there's a 50-50 chance of this occurring. So basically the uh, expected value is equal to 0.5 times zero plus 0.5 times um, 12, which is equal to six, okay? And so let's go to strategy two and see what all of those outcomes are, okay? So this strategy is when you bring six eggs at a time, right? So there's gonna be two separate trips. All right, six eggs at a time. So the outcomes, right? There's gonna be more outcomes because there's more trips in this case. So we get that outcome one is that um, there is six eggs broken plus another six eggs broken, right? Which means that in trip one, all of the eggs broke and in trip two, all of the eggs broke, okay? Um, so outcome two is that six eggs broken plus zero eggs broken, right? And I think that you guys can kind of see the pattern. So I'm just going to, uh, without saying it out loud, I'm just going to keep writing it. Okay, um, and what's important to note is that there's a 50% chance of this occurring and there's a 50% chance of this occurring, right? So this is 50% and 50%. But, right, with this probability here, there was a 50% chance that six eggs were broken. And then there was also a 50% chance that on trip two, six eggs were broken. So this is equal to 50% times 50%, right, which is equal to 25%, right? And this is true for all the way down uh, from outcome one to outcome four. So if we were to set up an expected value, right, for this strategy two, and we're just gonna erase this so far, right, just for now. So we get that the expected value is equal to 0.25, times the outcome, and so that's zero eggs plus 0.25 times the outcome, which is six eggs, uh, plus 0.25 times the outcome, which is six eggs, plus 0.25 times the outcome, which is 12 eggs, right? And if you find what this is equal to, right, this is 1.5 plus 1.5 is three, and this is three, so this is equal to six, right? And you see that the expected value, meaning that the expected, or I guess expected outcome is that you're gonna return back with six eggs, right? So um, basically if you were to keep going on trips, right? If you had un infinite, if you had infinite attempts of bringing 12 eggs home, right? Um, that on average, you would come home with six eggs. So that's kind of what it means. Um, so the expected outcome is six eggs for each case, which is equal. Um, the part B of this question is what is the key difference between the two strategies? Um, I wouldn't expect you guys to really know this uh, unless you guys have taken stats classes, but essentially by having more outcomes that reduces the uh, variance of each event, um, but that's kind of all it really means. So um, part B would say that you have less variance, but uh, I don't think you guys would really be expected to know that um, in a econ class, all right? Um, but I think what you would be expected to show is that in each strategy, 
the expected outcome is six eggs, okay? So let's go to question 11, or actually let's go to question 12 because I know that 12 is a kind of a good one. So let's do that. And then if we can get to 11, we'll get to 11. All right. So question 12 is a good one. Um, and it's the, it's not the pirate ship, but it's, a sh it's like a ship question. So the ship is worth $200 million. So um, basically, if you guys remember in my lecture on Monday, I said that if you had a car that was worth $500, then the maximum amount that you can lose on that car is 500, right? So the ship being worth 200 million means that L is equal to 200 million, okay? Um, yeah, and so if the ship sinks, then he loses all of that 200 million, right? Which is kind of sh just showing this. Um, the probability, that it sinks is equal to 0 0.02. And uh, his total wealth, including the value of the ship, is 225 million, right? So M is equal to 225 million, right? And his expected utility is equal to the square root, square root of his wealth. And so what is the maximum amount that William would be willing to pay in order to be fully assured and get against the risk of losing his ship? So this is one of those situations where um, you're basically going to see how much does the cost of insurance have to be in order for him to be indifferent between having full insurance and having no insurance, right? Um, so that's kind of in words. It, it probably doesn't resonate much with you guys. So um, that's why we kind of have to work through this problem and see exactly what I mean by that. So in order for you to be indifferent between having no insurance and having um, full insurance, the expected utilities would have to be the same, right? So we want to find the expected utility with no insurance. That way we can see how much utility you get from that, okay? So the expected utility with no insurance is equal to um, probability of the bad state times the utility of his consumption in the bad state plus the probability that no accident occurs, or I guess this is good, times the utility that he gets when um, nothing bad occurs, right? So his utility when he doesn't get in an accident. So we know that this probability right here is 0 0.02. And we know that the utility is equal to the square root of his wealth, or I guess consumption. Those are kind of inter interchangeable terms. So in the case, right, where he does get in an accident, we know that his uh, consumption is going to be equal to M minus L, right? If you remember from Monday's lecture, this is consumption in the bad state with no insurance, okay? So that's all it really is. And so we have that this right here, this probability is equal to 0.98, and this is equal to the square root of just M, right? Because if nothing happens and he doesn't have to pay anything to the insurance company, then what he has is just what he started off with, okay? So, we get that this is equal to 0 0.02 times the square root of 25. So I'm just gonna be working, um, I'm gonna take away the million so that I don't have to have like long um, kind of attachments to this, like all the zeros. And then I'm just gonna add a million at the end so that we're, we make sure that we're working in the same kind of units, okay? So this is gonna be 25 minus 20 or 225 minus 20, excuse me, or minus 200. So this is 225 minus 200, which was equal to 25. I think that's why I put it. Plus 0.98 times 225, okay? And this is equal to 0.02 times, times five, 
plus 0.98 times 15, right? So 15 times 15 is equal to 225, so that the square root of 225 is 15. So times 15, and we wanna see what this is equal to, all right? So what we do 0.98 times 15 plus 0.02 times five, and we get that this is equal to 14.8. So his expected utility from having no insurance is equal to 14.8. Um, and I realize that I'm a little bit over time. So if you guys need to go, you guys can definitely go. But um, if you are able to stay, I encourage you guys because um, I think this is a really good problem um, that um, will kind of, if you guys are able to solve these problems, that's great. But if you guys are stuck on these problems, then I think that this is a good problem to kind of get you guys more comfortable with that. Um, so yeah, basically what I'm saying is 14.8 is his expected utility from having no insurance, right? And so in order to see how much he'd be willing to pay for insurance, we have to make sure that his expected utility with no insurance is equal to his expected utility with full insurance, okay? So when we do that, we do 14.8, because this is his utility, right? Is equal to probability of the bad state, which is 0.02, times utility of consumption in the bad state. And we know that his utility is the square root of wealth, right? And his wealth, when he has full insurance, is M minus gamma L, right? And we also know that this is 0.98 and that his utility in the good state is the square root of wealth. So that's why we have the square root. And we know that his consumption in the good state is also M minus gamma L, okay? And so because we have like terms right here, because we have M minus gamma L and M minus gamma L, we can actually combine these two and just have this being equal to the square root of M minus gamma L. So that's something that you're always gonna be able to do in these problems is just add these two terms and have this be equal to one. So this is like one, if you will, right? This is 0 0.02 plus 0 0.98 being equal to one, okay? All right, and so his willingness to pay for full insurance is gonna be this amount, right? This is how much he's gonna be willing to pay for full insurance. This is the premium, right? And so we want to find what this amount is, right? Um, because that's going to be the only unknown variable. So we have that M is equal to 225, right? So we can sub that in, right? And we want to solve for gamma L, okay? Well, first off, we know that um, we're going to want to square both sides. So 14.8 squared right? Um, so let's, uh, let's move this over here. We have that 225 minus gamma L is equal to 14.8 squared, right? And so gamma L is equal to 225 minus 14.8 squared, right? And I know that I'm running out of room, but I hope that you guys can see this, right? So 225 minus 14.8 squared is equal to 5.96, right? And remember, we're working in terms of millions. So our final answer is that his willingness to pay for full insurance is gonna be 5.96 million, right? That's like the amount that makes him be indifferent between full insurance and uh, no insurance, right? And so what you can kind of think of is if gamma L is any less than 5.96, then his expected utility from having full insurance is higher than the expected utility from having no insurance. And so if insurance is cheaper than this amount, then he fully insures. And if he has insurance that's more expensive than this, then um, then um, he's going to have no insurance. Yeah, so gamma is just the cost of a dollar's worth of insurance. And 
L is the amounts that uh, the amount of insurance that he buys when there's full insurance. Does that answer your question? Um, and actually, are there any just general questions about um, this question and like how I go about it? I think that you're going to get a lot of these, right? Uh, when you go through your practice midterm. So I think it's really important to be comfortable with these in particular, like the willingness to pay for full insurance. Um, but, you know, I think that every question is also just important on its own. Uh, are there any questions about this? Um, if there's no questions, I'm going to let you guys go. Um, I apologize for going long, but um, hopefully you guys got something out of this. Um, and if you had any questions, just know that this will get posted onto uh, the CLES 410A gotcha space. All right.